This might be the best matchup for both sides of the ball in fantasy football this year. Both teams were top six in points allowed to wide receivers last year. Both secondaries got roasted on a consistent basis. These wide receivers should all feast in this matchup. We're talking about <laughs> Let's talk about wide receivers that you should start or sit in week one of the fantasy football season. We're going to cover all 32 teams, 16 matchups. At the end of this video, you will have heard about more than 70 wide receivers in fantasy football this week. Consider this your complete guide to the wide receiver position. You know exactly who to start after watching this one. Let's get straight to it with Thursday Night Football, the season opener. We've all been waiting for it. Ravens at Chiefs, a rematch of the AFC Championship last year. There's a wide receiver that I know is thinking about this matchup, Zay Flowers. You guys remember when he fumbled the ball on the one yard line, he's been thinking about this for a hot minute. He's ready to get right. The over under is 46 and a half. So there should be quite a few fantasy points scored in this one. Let's start with the Ravens side of the ball. The Chiefs last year were a terrible matchup. They gave up the third fewest points, 30th in points allowed to wide receivers in fantasy football. However, Zay Flowers is still a must start in pretty much every format. He's my wide receiver 31 this week. For most people, you drafted Zay Flowers as your third or fourth wide receiver in rounds five or six. I find it difficult to think about a league where you can sit this guy on the bench, but I know some of you guys have stacked rosters. However, I would lower expectations for Zay Flowers because Mark Andrews is playing. We saw this all last year in 2023 in games Without Mark Andrews on the right side, Zay Flowers averaged over 17 PPR points. In games with Mark Andrews, though, he averaged about 11, so slightly lower expectations. And by the way, with Rashad Bateman, there's been a lot of talk, coach speak, on him. Let's see how big his role is. I just don't think there's enough volume in this offense to even consider him, even in like a DFS format. Moving on to the Chiefs side of the ball, I am so excited to start Rasheed Rice in week one, my wide receiver 19 this week. Last year, the Ravens were 24th in points allowed, but this offense is going to be humming. Rasheed Rice and Travis Kelsey will be the engine that targets funnel through. Rasheed Rice, a my guy this year, remember from a week 11 onwards last year, he averaged about 17 PPR points per game. He was a wide receiver nine from week 11 to 17. That's when he became a starter full time. And the last time Rasheed Rice faced the Ravens was in the AFC Championship game. He was targeted nine times. Now let's talk about rookie Xavier Worthy. Xavier Worthy is a very, very fun high upside spot start this week by wide receiver 41. He will start for this team in two wide receiver sets. Why? Because Hollywood Brown is has been ruled out with that shoulder injury. So if you want to infuse your lineup with a whole bunch of upside, but a questionable floor, Xavier Worthy is a fun player to throw out there. But man, I'm so excited for this game. Why don't you tell me your predictions down below in the chat? All right. It is extremely important that you know this piece of information. This could ruin your week if you don't know that there is a game on Friday night. Yes, right after Thursday night football, we have a Friday night game, Packers versus Eagles, and this is in Sao Paulo, Brazil. So we're going Mr. 305 worldwide, 48 and a half point over under, two high powered offense offenses facing off in week one. Let's start with the Packers side of the ball. This matchup is beautiful. This is exactly the matchup you want to see in week one. Why? Because the Eagles are going to score a lot of points. They have a great offense. But defensively, their secondary was burnt toast last year. I know they added a cornerback in the second round, but they still should be a pretty suspect secondary because they've, they're also dealing with injuries there. The Eagles last year gave up more points to the fantasy wide receiver position than any other team in the NFL. Jaden Reed is a must start. My wide receiver, 35. Now, Remember last year, he was a league winner from week 10 onwards. He was a wide receiver eight in points per game and the wide receiver four in championship week, week 17 definition of a league winner. Now, a lot of that production came when Christian Watson wasn't healthy. He could still very well be the wide receiver one on this team. Both of these guys could still eat. Christian Watson, also a must start. My wide receiver 36 averaged over six targets per game when he played at least 70% of the snaps in 2023. And as far as Romeo Dobbs goes, I really like him in like a DFS format. I'm not so sure I want to start him in a traditional league. Last year, when Jaden Reed and Christian Watson were both healthy, Romeo Dobbs averaged under 10 PPR points per game, even worse than half PPR. So I just don't think he's a reliable starter. And as far as Wicks goes, a really fun stash, but not someone that you can start. 
Moving on to the Eagles side of the ball. This one is very simple, but I think this offense could be even more exciting, specifically through the air. Kellen Moore is now the offensive coordinator for this team. He uses a lot of pre-snap motion. So we're finally going to be able to see this new offense under Kellen Moore. A.J. Brown's a must-start. You know that. Devonta Smith a must-start. Likely to be used more in the slot. I'm so excited to see that. And of course, we're not going to start Jahan Dotson. That's absolutely ridiculous. All right, we are finally moving on to the Sunday 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time slate of games. We've got Steelers at Falcons, 40 and a half point over under, according to Vegas. This is one out of three matchups that are tied for the lowest total points this week, meaning Vegas does not expect a high-powered offense from either one of these teams. But if you look at the Steelers here, right, George Pickens, I have labeled a must-start. This is a big day for this offense. So many question marks. New quarterbacks, new offensive coordinator, but George Pickens, I just don't think that you can sit him if you drafted him. If you drafted George Pickens, he was a fourth or fifth round pick most likely. So I don't see how you sit him unless you're in a super small league. Now with George, this is not a very good matchup. I can totally recognize that. The Falcons gave up the fifth few, fewest points, two wide receivers in 2023. AJ Terrell's a monster. You got Jesse Bates, Justin Simmons as your safeties. However, again, if you drafted him, I think he's got to at least be in your flex. I would say 40% of people do not have a better option than George Pickens. But if you're a part of that select 40% in a smaller league, you can consider somewhere else because of the matchup. But for me, the target's going to be there. The opportunities are going to be there. And I think they're going to have to come from behind because the Falcons, baby, I am so excited to see Kirk Cousins and this new look Atlanta Falcons offense. In the last two years, all right, Kirk Cousins has had a top 15 wide receiver Finish in 17 of 25 starts. 68% of the time in the past two years, Kirk Cousins has produced a top 15 wide receiver. And now we get to see Drake London on the opposite end of that. My wide receiver 14, an absolute must start. We finally get to see him with a reliable quarterback, with catchable targets. He's always dominated target share. Now those targets will actually be good. I don't think you can start Darnell Mooney. He's a risky start. 90% of people have a better start than him. However, he's a great stash because we have seen Kirk produce multiple fantasy wide receivers. All right, moving on to the fourth matchup here. We got the Cardinals at the Bills. 48 and a half point over under and the Bills are favored at home. Two huge debuts for fantasy football at the wide receiver spot. Marvin Harrison Jr. debut, Keon Coleman debut. Let's start with the Cardinals. The Bills were a tough outing last year, but Marvin is a must start. Come on, guys. You guys drafted this guy in the second round. You can't sit him. Don't overthink it. Keep it simple, stupid. If he's on your team, he is playing. Here's the good news. The Cardinals defense is booty cheeks. Absolute ass. All right. They might be a bottom three unit in the league. Why is that good news? That's good news because the Bills are probably going to score a lot of points. The Cardinals are probably going to have to throw the ball a lot, and Marvin Harrison Jr. is going to get a lot of targets, so start him. Uh, there's not another name there you can start, though, with Wilson or Dortch. Moving on to the Bills' side of the ball, everyone's a spot start for me, all right? Now, I'll have my editor put up the terminology here so you guys can see this. A spot start means you can start them if you're in a tough spot, but I don't have the confidence to feel excited about it. I can't personally tell you which, if any, of these wide receivers are reliable starts in week one. If anyone can, you should also ask them what the Powerball numbers are this week because they're probably able to read the future and they're gonna help you become a millionaire. I unfortunately cannot read the future, but here's what I will say. There are a lot of unknowns. The good news is we should learn a lot about this new look offense in week one. Keon Coleman, spot start. Khalil Shakir, spot start. Curtis Samuel, who is currently healing up from that toe injury. I'll say this, if Curtis Samuel is out, if he does not play, watch the practice reports, I will feel much more confident in Keon and Khalil Shakir, but they are all spot starts in deeper formats, start nine, where you have three flex spots, totally throw Keon Coleman in there. But in a start seven, where you can only start two wide receivers in a flex, I don't know that Keon is your best option. Just being transparent with you, there's a lot of unknowns in that offense, but it will be fun to watch. All right, the fifth matchup here, Another debut for a rookie, Titans at Bears, Caleb Williams. The bad man himself making his debut. 
Let's start with the Chicago side of the ball here. The Titans were a great matchup for wide receivers last year. They were top 10 in points allowed to fantasy wide receivers. DJ Moore is the alpha number one on this team. He is a must start. I'm trying to lower my expectations in week one because it is Caleb's debut. We don't know exactly what the chemistry will be in real games that matter between this wide receiver core and Caleb Williams, but you can't sit DJ Moore. I would personally label Keenan Allen and Roma Dunze both spot starts. I would not put a must start label on either of these names, mainly because people have been debating all offseason on either side of this debate on who they think is starting in two wide receiver sets. I believe Keenan Allen is starting in two wide receiver sets. That means Keenan Allen will play more snaps than Roma Dunze, meaning Roma Dunze might have less opportunities to be targeted because he won't be on the field as much, right? I see a very realistic scenario in which Roma Dunze is only out on the field about 60% of the snaps and he gets, let's say, four to six targets this game. That is that is a scary start, in my opinion. I got to see it a little bit to believe it, not because Roma Dunze isn't talented enough, but because this entire wide receiver room is so talented. So there's so many mouths to feed. So I think Keenan is a, is a safer play in a PPR format. But man, I got to be honest with you guys. I'm not thrilled to start either of these names, but in deeper leagues, three flex spots, I can see why you would want to put them out there. Now, with the Titans side of the ball, the Bears are a pretty good defense, to be honest. They have one of the better cover corners in the league in Jalen Johnson, but Calvin Ridley is a must start for me, my wide receiver 33, especially if DeAndre Hopkins is ruled out. I will be moving Calvin Ridley up into the top 30s of my rankings. Now, with DeAndre Hopkins himself, I'm going to label him a risky start. 90% of you have a better option. At the time of recording this video, here's the update. The Titans are hopeful he plays, which tells me nothing because I'm sure every team is hopeful that every player on their team is available and healthy, but that doesn't give me any information. Even if DeAndre Hopkins does play, you think he would be on a snap count, right? So I just don't think Hopkins is, is someone that anyone should start this week. Next matchup we'll look at is the Patriots at the Bengals. Over under is 40 and a half points. One out of three matchups that are tied for the lowest over under of the week. And the Patriots are huge underdogs. The Bengals are the biggest favorites of the week in this one right here. Meaning Vegas thinks the Bengals are going to score a lot of points, y'all. Let's start with them, Cincinnati Bengals. You guys have a ton of questions. I know specifically about Jamar Chase. At the time of recording this, okay, it is Monday. And the latest report for Jamar Chase is they're going to take it day by day. He is not practicing, so I get why some people might be concerned. By the time you need to make this call, you will know if he's playing or not. I am someone who believes that ultimately one of these two sides are going to have to cape. I do not see a scenario in which Jamar Chase is actually not playing in week one. He does not want to do that to his buddy Joe Burrow. OK, and ultimately, this team needs to get back thinking about Super Bowls rather than contracts. I think it will get sorted out either way. So I'm going to label Jamar Chase a must start. And I guess some people might ask the question, well, aren't you worried about his lack of practice? No, absolutely not. It's like riding a bicycle with these two. You just get right back on the bike. That chemistry is inbuilt with Jamar Chase and Joe Burrow. T. Higgins, a must start for me, my wide receiver 30. If Chase missed this week, if he actually does hold out, Higgins would become a top 15 play for me myself. Now, with the Patriots, there's not a single name I feel comfortable starting this week. Jacoby Brissett is going to be starting. There's not really much evidence of him producing top 24 wide receivers on a consistent basis. Demario Douglas might have some flex appeal in PPR formats. Jalen Polk is probably not even playing with the ones in this game. He's got to work his way up the depth chart. KJ Osborne, Tyquan Thornton, I have no interest in starting any of those names. Neither should you. The seventh matchup we're going to look at here is the Texans at the Colts, an AFC South divisional game, the third highest over under of the week, and the Texans are favored away from home. There hasn't been a wide receiver core that has been more heavily debated this entire offseason than the Houston Texans. And now, it doesn't matter what you thought, we finally get to see what is true. All right. If you were a Diggs guy, you get to find out if that was the right call. If you were a Dell guy, you get to find out if that was the right call. If you took Nico Collins because you thought he was a top five upside type of player, you get to see if that was the right call, right? We finally get to see this wide receiver core play itself out, but I will label all three of these names must starts. Nico Collins, my wide receiver 11, averaged over 17 points per game with CJ Stroud last year. Now, granted, a lot of that came without Tank Dell. Now they also add Stephon Diggs. 
there could be some boom bust games. Stephon Diggs, my wide receiver 24. I believe this team will be intentional about getting Diggs targets in the red zone. I think they want to get him into the end zone. I would think they want to get him comfortable in week one, you know, happy with his new surroundings. And ultimately, I think they want to get him a touchdown to make him happy. Tank Dell, my wide receiver 34 on the week. That makes him a wide receiver three. Was a fifth round pick in fantasy drafts. I can't imagine you sitting a fifth round pick. Dell Truthers, this is where the rubber meets the road. Do not be upset if Tank plays the fewest snaps of these three. Hope for big time plays, which is possible with CJ Stroud. Now, as far as the Colts side of the ball goes, the Texans are maybe one of the better defenses in the NFL today after the changes they made this offseason. They signed Daniil Hunter, Danico Autry, a ton of cornerback depth, linebacker depth. They got secondary help in the draft. Don't be surprised if this defense is locked down in 2024, but still you can't sit Michael Pittman, wide receiver 27. Still, you know, have to put him out there. He has a very safe floor in 10 out of 17 games last year. He finishes a top 24 wide receiver. Now, what will that mean with Anthony Richardson finally being the starter full time? We'll have to wait and see. I don't think there's another player you really want to start here. There's too many questions about Mitchell and Downs. Downs, if Downs is not playing because of the ankle injury, Mitchell becomes a better play in like DFS, but I don't think he should be start, he should be touching your starting lineup. All right, the eighth matchup we're looking at is Jags at Dolphins. 50 and a half point over under. The Dolphins are favored at home. This is the second highest over under of the week, meaning there should be a lot of fantasy points in this one we should see a ton of points the Jags let's start there all right I actually really love the Jags wide receivers in week one and it has less to do with Miami's defense than it does to do with Miami's offense here's what I mean they scored the third most points per game last year they're one of the most explosive offenses in the NFL and I believe the Jags are going to have to air the ball out to try and keep up with these Miami Dolphins meaning that should be a lot of success for these wide receivers in fantasy football. Brian Thomas, my wide receiver 38, one of my favorite spot starts this week. I believe he's going to be a huge part of this game plan from day one. If you look at preseason snaps, he played 88% of the snaps in 12 personnel, 11 personnel. He played 88% of the snaps. Now, Christian Kirk, I would also label a spot start. Just because he didn't play in 12 personnel does not mean he's not going to be a valuable fantasy player. He absolutely will bring a ton of value in fantasy football. When he's running routes, he'll be heavily targeted. I just prefer Brian Thomas because I think there's a ceiling there that Christian Kirk does not have. And as far as Gabe Davis goes, if you want to just throw him out there, he's a better best ball player than he is a traditional format. And then as far as the Dolphins goes, both wide receivers are back at practice. So. If you have Tyree Kill, if you have Jalen Waddle, take a big breath. They are going to play this week. At least all indications are that they will play this week. The Jags are a great matchup for fantasy wide receivers. Last year, they gave up the 11th most points per game to the position, and it's a get-right year for Jalen Waddle. I, I could easily see them wanting to get him back on track, and he just drops a 40-point bomb in week one. So, Definitely start your Dolphins. All right, ninth matchup we'll look at here is the Panthers at the Saints at NFC South Showdown. 40 and a half point over under. Again, one of those three matchups that are expected to score the fewest points this week. So there is still fantasy value to have here, but not that much. We finally get to see Bryce Young in year two. He didn't play a single snap in preseason. We finally get to see him and Dave Canales as the head coach. I would label Deontay Johnson, excuse me, as a must start. Deontay's kind of on the edge of a must start and a spot start. If you're in a start 7-10 team league, you probably have better options in a smaller league. If you're in a start 9-12 team league, he probably should be in your starting lineup. I believe he will be the highest targeted player in this offense, similar to what we saw with Adam Thielen last year. Now, the Saints side of the ball, we all know that Alave is going to be fed targets, but can Clint Kubiak give him layups and can Derek Carr give him more catchable targets? We'll find out in week one, but he should be in all starting lineups. Coming off a career high, 138 targets, 8.6 targets per game. He has to find a way into your lineup. Outside of that, though, Deontay and Alave, there's no one else to talk about, in my opinion. All right, the 10th matchup we're going to look at here, a playoff rematch from two years ago. Vikings at Giants. 41 and a half point over under. This is the closest spread of any game this week, meaning Vegas thinks this will be the closest game when it comes down to the fourth quarter, with the witching hour, if you will. Let's start with the Vikings side of the ball. And to be honest, guys, this matchup could be fantasy gold. 
This might be the best matchup for both sides of the ball in fantasy football this year. Both teams were top six in points allowed to wide receivers last year. Both secondaries got roasted on a consistent basis. These wide receivers should all feast in this matchup. We're talking about Justin Jefferson, wide receiver four on the week for me. We're talking about Jordan Addison, a great start in deeper formats. We're talking about Malik Neighbors, who makes his debut my wide receiver 20. All things considered, you couldn't ask for a better matchup. The secondary is Cheeks in Minnesota, and we could see Malik Neighbors with a 30% target share. I got a bold take for y'all. Malik Neighbors starts his career with six receptions, 70 yards, and a receiving touchdown. I think he finds his way into the end zone. But outside of Malik, Jefferson, and Addison, there's no one else that you could consider starting here. All right, let's move on to the afternoon slate of games. All right, so whenever you've got a lot of food, all of it's settled in your stomach now, you're about to take a nap, you're going to think about Raiders at Chargers. Remember, guys, the last time these two teams played, the Chargers got their ass handed to them. Brandon Staley was fired the next day. The Chargers gave up over 60 points. The Chargers had this matchup circled on their schedule. We know that, all right? Over under is 41 and a half. Let's start with the Raiders side of the ball. Last year, the Chargers were terrible as a secondary. They might've gotten better, but they're still a very weak unit. Devontae Adams is a smash start. One of my starts of the week should be fed targets in week one. Last year, the Chargers gave up the third most fantasy points Two wide receivers, new coaching staff from top to bottom, but there are still major holes in that secondary in Los Angeles. And Jacoby Myers is a sneaky spot start, guys. I mean, last year he was a wide receiver 24. In deeper leagues, I think he's a fun wild card to put out there. As far as the Chargers go, Josh Palmer and Lad McConkie, both spot starts. If I had to choose one of these names right now, it would be Josh Palmer. I believe he will start the season as a wide receiver one. And last year he averaged over 14 points per game when Keenan Allen went down with an injury. Lad McConkey, I'm fine to put him out there, but I think he's more of a league winner second half of the season. All right, the 12th matchup we'll look at here, Bo Nix debuts in Seattle. All right, 41 and a half point over under here. The Seahawks young secondary slightly fell apart last year. They gave up the 12th most points to the position. However, we should have very low expectations for the Denver wide receivers as Bo Nix makes his debut as a rookie. Cortland Sutton, my wide receiver 44. You can throw him out there. Don't be excited about it. Don't watch the game. You probably won't be excited watching the game. But last year, Cortland Sutton had a career year and still sat at wide receiver 38 in points per game in fantasy football. It's a decent matchup, but. I got a lot of confidence on other names personally. And as far as the Seahawks go, I am so freaking excited to watch this new offense with Ryan Grubb. They should air the ball out a lot more. And we have been begging the Seahawks to use JSN in a way that best showcases his abilities. And I believe we will finally see that versus Denver. Denver last year was 25th in points allowed, so they were a tough matchup, but I'm going to label DK Metcalf a must start. Of course, we know he's the alpha, and I think JSN is a very fun spot start. He's right on the edge of a must start and a spot start. Here's what I will say. Tyler Lockett right now is dealing with an injury. If he doesn't play, JSN would definitely move to a must start for me, but I'm kind of struggling with the decision myself. I like to show you guys this. My last flex spot in my home league, I'm choosing between Stevenson and JSN. It's a PPR league. At the moment, I'm leading Stevenson. But if we see JSN, you know, starting to get these targets and let's say Tyler Lockett is out, maybe I lean that way. But right now I am choosing Stevenson and Tyler Lockett, regardless of if he plays or not, I am not playing him in fantasy football. All right. The 13th matchup we're going to look at today is the Cowboys at the Browns. Two defenses that are very good against wide receivers. This is a bad matchup for both wide receivers, but you don't sit CeeDee Lamb. Duh, we know that. My wide receiver two on the week. I don't think you start anyone else in this in this wide receiver room, though. And as far as the Browns go, I think Amari Cooper is the only name I want to start as well. Trevon Diggs is back and healthy, but Amari is a clear alpha. We know any given week, Amari Cooper can go out there and put up, what, 30, 40, 50 points like he did in the fantasy playoffs last year. So while it's a tough matchup on both sides, there are clear names that you can start because of their status within the room. All right, the 14th matchup we're going to look at, I am personally very excited because I have so much stock of this quarterback, this rookie, making his debut in Dynasty. That is the Commanders at Bucks. We're talking Jaden Daniels, baby. We finally get to see the electric Jaden Daniels make his debut. As a Commanders fan myself, I'm hoping we see a similar de debut to what RG3 did in 2012 against the Saints as a rookie. Uh, I, I can hope, right? I can, I can hope. I can at least hope. All right. 44 and a half point over under. Now, for the Bucks, 
the Bucks wide receivers should feast. I'm telling you guys this as a Commanders fan, our secondary is absolute cheeks. All right, Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, smash starts in week one. Last year, the Commanders gave up the second most points to fantasy wide receivers, and we lost our best defensive back. All right, Kendall Fuller left this team in free agency. It should be free game all year on this secondary, and I think Mike Evans and Chris Godwin are fantastic starts this week. We should see a monster game for them. And I'm telling you this as a fan, we're, our, our secondary is awful. Now, as far as the commanders go, Terry McLaurin is the only one that you can consider starting here. My wide receiver 26 on the week. Do we finally get to see Terry with competent quarterback play? Now, here's the good news. Without Jahan Dotson in Washington, the Commanders have the second most vacated targets in the NFL. Here's the bad news. More times than not, a rookie quarterback does not support a fantasy-relevant wide receiver. However, Jaden Daniels could be the outlier. We know we saw an outlier last year with C.J. Stroud. But I think you can start, Terry. The volume will be there. The design targets will be there in this offense, okay? All right, the 15th matchup we'll look at here, Sunday Night Football. Get hyped for this one. A rematch from last year's playoffs, Rams at Lions. The over-under is 51 and a half points, and the Lions are favored. The highest over-under of the week. So Vegas is saying the most fantasy cheese should come on Sunday night football. All right, let's start with the Rams here. Last year, the Lions gave up the fourth most points of fantasy wide receivers. All right, you start Puka Nakua, you start Cooper Cup. Last year, the Rams gave up the seventh most points to fantasy wide receivers. You start Amon Ross St. Brown. I have three wide receivers in this matchup ranked as top 15 options in week one. Puka Nakua should dominate coming off the best rookie wide receiver season ever. Cooper Cup should get back into the red zone. We know he is Matthew Stafford's favorite red zone target. Amon Ross St. Brown coming off a season last year where he scored over 20 points per game, he should pick right back up where he left off. Now, the only other player that's kind of like spot star, risky star, high upside name is Jamison Williams. Here's what I'll say about him. Loved him as a prospect. Loved him coming out of Alabama. I'm excited that we will finally see him as a full-time starter for this team. But I think he's a better best ball asset than he is a traditional redraft league. So I would say 90% of you have a better option heading into week one. And the last matchup we'll look at here is a big one. Jets at 49ers, Monday night football. Aaron Rodgers played just four snaps in 2023. You guys remember the meme of Aaron Rodgers walking out with the American flag? And that was the biggest meme of 2023 fantasy football. Well, can Aaron Rodgers stay healthy? I hope to God he can because Garrett Wilson will pop off if he finally can. My wide receiver seven, back-to-back -back seasons, over 140 targets in his first and second year. He should be a dominant fantasy asset if Aaron Rodgers can stay healthy. There's not another name we're really gonna talk about on that side of the ball, but as far as the 49ers go, terrible matchup for the 49ers. Honestly, the worst matchup in fantasy football for these 49ers in week one. Last year, the Jets gave up the fewest points to fantasy wide receivers. They were locked down city. Now, I think this impacts Ayuk way more than it impacts Debo Samuel because I see Sauce Gardner shadowing Ayuk in this one. Debo Samuel is going to get those rushing attempts, those design plays, those screen tar those screens, those slants. So I'm not so worried about Debo Samuel. I am a little bit more worried about Brandon Ayuk, but this offense is so damn good. I don't see how anyone could sit Ayuk, especially after he got that bag. Home game, Ayuk just signed long-term. They're going to want to get this guy in the end zone, let's be honest. So... Overall, I would say I have some major concerns. I could see a really bad game for Ayuk, but you drafted him in the third or fourth round, most likely. I don't see how you sit him in any format, but we should drastically lower our expectations. That's why he's my wide receiver 25 on the week. All right, guys, how do you feel? I hope I did a great job. Hopefully you have all the answers that you need to go into week one with your wide receivers and fantasy football. Do me a favor, hit that like button, subscribe if you like the content. Last thing I'll say is, rankings change constantly each week all the time okay because injuries happen new practice reports come out weather happens so if you want always updated rankings for myself then become a mother flocker member with the promo code land check out the pinned comment you'll get consistent updated rankings throughout the entire season that you can rely on and if you become a yearly member i'll review your fantasy football team 
I appreciate you for watching. Drop a like. I'll see you in the next one. All up. Now that those idiots are done talking, who needs some rankings? Hell yeah, I need some rankings. Then use promo code LAND, L-A-N-D, for 30% off any membership at flockfantasy.com. Oh.